Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, the green box of games. The green box of games can play from ages 1 to 99. Uh, I don't know if I bought oh, 3 to 99? Yeah, I don't know if I, I buy that one. 1 to 10, I guess depending on the game. And it is in English, French, and Dutch. Those are the three different rules of the three different rule books. And in the game, the three, the green box of games, there are 16 different types of games. This is a gaming mechanism uh, box. It allows you to play different types of games utilizing cubes, utilizing cards, and utilizing tiles. In the game, there's gonna be different things. There's gonna be games that involve tiling, there's games that involve pirates and temples and all sorts of different things in which you're gonna have to use a lot of imagination due to the fact there's a lot of, not a lot of artwork presented in the game, but there's a lot of different mechanics that represent a lot of games that you may have heard of before and are also a little bit new and some are actually pretty interesting too. Uh, 16 games, one box. Let's go ahead and show you the green box of games. So here's everything included in the green box of games. And as you can see, there's quite a bit. You got the tiles over here, and these tiles represent different symbols and different colors. Uh, and they use, you'll use actually the front and the back for different games as well. There's two cards here that are, uh, basically represent these tiles here, I think. Uh, these are the cards in the game, and as you can see, there's ooh, different colors. I messed this one up. Uh, you got the orange, you got the pink, and the green. They have symbols on them, they have dots on them, and then they have numbers on them as well. So they also have an outside border. So there's quite a lot of different things involving these cards here. You're also going to get four types of cubes, uh, whether they be red, yellow, green, or blue, and then two die. These are black and white. There's three different rule books, but we won't need to look at these uh, because those are in different languages and I don't know French or Dutch. So we'll be looking at this rule book here. Uh, and there's a ton of games in here. What's cool about this actually is I can show you the rule book and why it's interesting is uh, you can you can see that there's family games and strategy games and the family games are kind of interlapping with the strategy games and then the traditional games are on their own separate uh, separate thing here, uh, such as Liar's Dice or Liar's Cards, Speed, Backgammon, Halma or Othello or Othellano. Um, so let's go ahead and take a peek at some of these games here and how they function. The first one here we have is Goldmine, and Goldmine kind of reminds me of um, the Temple game, Temple, whatever it's called, the, the game in which you're basically going to be um, playing cards face up and then adding cubes to the card based on the number of cubes and then the number of players will take the cubes and you'll leave cubes on there based on whatever players can't take cubes. If there's two players, each player will get a cube. And then players will determine whether or not they want to stay or go. And if they choose to stay, a new card will come out and you'll keep and um, you'll keep putting cubes on and giving to players. And in this case, a two player game, this will just stay one because nobody actually can get it. Does anybody want to stay or go? And if this player wants to go, he can actually take uh, these tokens off. And basically he is now out. And this player now has the option to keep going in the game until two symbols are reached and he can take all the tokens. As you can see, that would be a bad idea to get out that soon until you get a certain amount of symbols that match three symbols, I believe. And when those three symbols match, you are out of luck and you bust. So you have to be very, very careful as to how far you want to go into the game. You're basically entering a temple and trying to gather all of its treasures. You've got a game like Faulty Towers where you're going to be setting up a grid of a six by four. And I really should probably shuffle this, but let's see if I can give it a better shuffle here. So those are all the same colors and whatnot. But you're basically going to be trying to make towers in this game, and you're going to collect cards based on those towers for victory points. So in this case, if I had these six out, just to give you an idea of how it works, uh, there's going to be one tower of each color over here. And if you want certain cards, like for instance, um, I don't know how the white, and I think the white actually, uh, and the, and the uh, black here are wild. So if in this case you wanted this card here, you can just simply take it and you can place a cube on something. So you take this card, it'll give you victory points. But let's say you wanted this one. In this case, you have to place, you can place anything you want because it's a wild. But let's actually make it more interesting and say it's like this. In this case, if you wanted this card here, you couldn't take it because you would need two greens and a red on one of these towers. And all these towers, towers only have one. So if a player wants this one, he could put a green on a green without dropping it, and he could take this card here, right? And that's and that would be a victory, that'd be victory points for him. A new card is going to refill its place. If somebody wants this card now, they can take it because there is uh, two greens already, and now you can put a red up, and that will allow you to steal this card here, and a new one will come out. 
And if you want this card here, luckily it's a wild, so you can put a blue on here if you wanted. Oh no! And you can take the card. When the tower falls, it you, the player gets to take the card and you uh, refresh the tower. And you keep going into the, in the game up until the point in which there's only, uh, in which the case there's two um, rows or columns are removed. And when that happens, the game's over. Normally you play with a six by, a six by four, I believe. So that's kind of how faulty towers works. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. We have a flower garden, which we're trying to build uh, flowers onto the cards. You're trying to gather certain types of symbols to gain bonus points. And the symbols will take a, a, a precedent in this game. We have uh, jump gate. This one is where we use the tiles actually. And you'll be uh, basically making this random board, so to speak. Uh, and look, look, maybe something like this, I suppose. I'll make a really small one, but just so you get the idea. And like that. Okay, let's just say it's like that, I guess. And then you're gonna be placing on each of these white areas here, one of each type of cube, and you're gonna be trying to gather your cubes from the board. So if we're just playing with two players here, we'll just move these all over like that. All these different spaces are gonna get cubes. See if I can remember all the rules for all these this, these games. That'd be pretty impressive. I doubt it though. Too many games. Um, and these are jump gates. They're gonna allow you to jump to the certain types. So in this case, probably not a good example. But if I had this one over here, it'd be a better example. And then you're going to have your player pawn, which will be on the board somewhere, and, and the other player's player pawn. And you'll also get cards in your hand, and those cards will give you numbers. Everybody gets the same amount of certain types of cards. And you'll roll the die, and then you'll move that many numbers. And if you get to a jump gate, you'll have to jump. And then after that, uh, you can choose to play a card. And if you do, you can, for instance, you play two, you can go over here and collect your cube. And you're just trying to go around and collect all the cubes on the board. But once you play cards, they're gone forever. So you have to be careful how you want to play them when you want to use them. <laughs> um, tunnel Run is a, very, it's a similar style game in which you're trying to get all the way through the tunnel. There's also a, uh, a pirate game that plays similar to that as well. Let's see what else is interesting. Grenade Salad is an interesting one as well, in which you're going to be not utilizing these as much. You'll be utilizing one of these, I guess. But... Basically, in this game, you're going to be throwing out uh, units on the board. Let's see if I can give you an idea. Throw them out. And then you're going to have cards in your hand, and they're all going to have special abilities. Like, for instance, this one is a cross sword, close combat attack with one soldier can kill another opponent. If the space between them is less than the width of a cube. So if I was playing as, I don't know, yellow, I could go ahead and check the width of a cube. And if the space between them is close enough, like maybe in that, for example, I could destroy that player's cube. And this is this is the battlefield here. And you're basically gonna be playing a combat style game, which you'll be utilizing these things to move around. So for instance, like this, you can move your characters around and uh, all these cards do different abilities and whatnot. And you're just trying to uh, nuke your opponents. It's a war style game. It's a miniatures war game, but you're utilizing cubes, cards, and then uh, tiles to move around the board. Uh, war 2.0 is an area control based game. Uh, we have, let's see what else, the gauntlet's a long one. Um, Temple of Doom is a solitaire that works cooperatively style game that you're going to be utilizing these uh, here and you're going to be trying to cooperatively solve these solitaire puzzles. Uh, what else? Uh, then you have these, all these classic games, Liars uh, Cards, which plays just like, kind of like Liars Dice plays and Speed in which you're going to have uh, cards in the middle that you're going to try and match and players are going to try and play uh, their deck as fast as humanly possible. You have your hand of cards and you're playing on here as fast as possible and emptying your hand. Uh, speed's a really fun, cool little game. Um, I play this in high school a lot. Backgammon actually utilizes all the cubes and whatnot to play a game of backgammon with uh, the green box of games. Halma plays just like it would and so does Othello or Othellino. Um, and then it tells you on the back all the components involved. And not only that, uh, we'll including all these different games and whatnot, but what's also included is online. There's a plethora of other games you can utilize and play with the green box of games. Or if you'd like, you can even make up your own game involving all of these, uh, all of these components and you can post it online and they, they might post your, your, uh, explanation your game up on there so it's pretty cool but for the most part that's what's going to be included in this game there's a lot of games as you could see um, i went through as many as i possibly could remember as quickly as i possibly could for you guys uh, let's come up and talk about what i think about this game and um whether or not you should pick it up all right so what do i think about the green box of games well it's a game system i've reviewed a lot of these style game systems before and i like them all the problems with this one are going to ensue with the problems of any game system and that's going to be theme 
is very minimal and that's because there's minimal artwork so you're not going to get as much um, theme invested in this in these games you're going to have to use a lot of imagination to understand how they work but when you play games that are more solitary like or games that literally involve the, to the cards and tokens and all that kind of stuff and symbols it uh it works fine now uh as for the games themselves some of them are games that i have played previously that uh function uh, similar to other games, uh, and then some of them are pretty unique and interesting. The Faulty Towers one is an interesting take on gathering sets of cards and preventing towers from falling. There's dexterity style games like Speed, and then you have games like that uh, that Salad, War Salad, or whatever, where you're throwing your thick cubes on the ground and moving around. It's a warlike simulator. Uh, and then you've got the Solitaire style games. There's area control. This This really gives you a good idea of all the different types of games in board games that there are. Now, not all of them, obviously. There's no worker placement or pickup and delivery and that kind of stuff. Nothing thick like that. But it gives you a good idea. All 16 games are rather different, rather unique in all of their own ways. And some of them do imbibe either classic games or games that have been made, but utilizing the screen box to prove that there's a ton of games that you can make utilizing just some tokens, some cards, and, uh, and uh, some uh, tiles. That's pretty much what you need. Um, some games are more fun than others too. Uh, the time warp one is fine, but it also it, it kind of like drags on the, t the tunnel warp where you're moving around the board. That kind of like weighs on you after like 25 minutes because you're just rolling the dice, trying to get lucky. And those the strategies really in the cards you play. Once you run out of those, it can be pretty time consuming. Uh, the temple game where you're trying to go through and gather the resources. I like that game, but it also because I like the game it's based off of, uh, which is fine and. The War Salad game, that's a fun one. I really like the War Simulator style games. And I like how it integrates into this box because it was not a game I was expecting to see. Neither was Speed, neither was certain Solitaire games. And that area control game was also unique and interesting. That was something I wasn't expecting in this as well. Um, there were some of the ones I were expect, I was expecting that, that you know, are come in a lot of these styles of games, in which you can go ahead and check out for yourself. But overall, it's a pretty standard style gaming system with unique games to it that I haven't seen in other games. Uh, minus, of course, there's not a lot of artwork, but there is a lot of symbols. They have a lot of different variations of the cards and whatnot, and uh, a lot of use for creativity that you can go ahead and make your own games and see all the different things they have online. It's very creative, and it's not something that I'd probably be able to do is create something that has all this, all these functions. But overall, it's a fun little game, provided you don't mind all the, the negative critique I gave it, and you like the positive aspects of being able to have creating your own gaming engines and the 16 different types of games and additional games that you can go ahead and check out. Some of them are classics that you generally like. It's going to be a game that you're definitely going to want uh, to... I, I would suggest to um, older people are going to like this game because uh, it's going to have all those basic like style. Like My grandfather's played uh, the backgammon for this game and he enjoyed that one. And um, he played one of the other ones. So I gave him the box to see what games he was interested in. He's like, oh, this is, I, I remember playing some of these style games and it works pretty well. It's very easy to understand. That's another thing going before it is the rules are pretty easy to understand as far as this game goes. But anyway, I think you know what you're getting in this type of game. For me, it's right down the line. It's one of those games where uh, I'm not going to specifically go out of my way to pick up the gaming engines, but I do enjoy playing them. And if somebody asks me to play the green box of games, I definitely will. Provided they're not 99 years old, though. I don't think 99 years old can play. Well, I guess they could. Uh, Three-year-olds, maybe not, though. I think they might eat these pieces. I, I don't know, maybe. Anyway, that's my review of the green box of games. Definitely something to check out and look up, uh, check out and decide for yourself if you want to pick it up. It's got a lot of games. A lot of games. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this game, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and all this stuff. We greatly appreciate it. And hit that little bell notification. I appreciate it. It's really, really important that you do because it just keeps, it keeps my heart bumping and uh, keeps me able to do this even though my voice dies after three or four videos. Check out the green box of games if you like a uh, game mechanism box that has a ton of different things in it for, I, I guess it probably would be a pretty uh, decent price point based on what's in it. Uh, as well as taking a look at my friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, as well as my own site, unfilteredgamer.com. We're giving away board games right now. Wingspan is one of them. Ah, that's all I got for you today. And as next time, I look forward to boxing all of the green games with you.